Hi, my name is Michael and I'm the Shop Geek, and in this project episode we're going to build a poker table for the home. Now this poker table can also be used for playing board games or just social visits, but it's going to have a special speed cloth center with a foam padding that make card games especially comfortable on this style of table. Now those of you that have been watching poker on TV, you'll notice this is going to be a round table, or octagonal table rather, not a long table. Those long tables require a center dealer, and they're not designed for home games. If you're going to rotate dealer in a poker game, or if you want to play board games on this table, then the octagon is really the way to go. The full material list for this project is available on our website, shopgeek.ca, and the address will be down in the links below in the video. Uh, we're going to use a 5 foot by 5 foot piece of plywood called birch plywood. That'll give us a nice large playing surface for 8 people. I find if you go with a 4x4 sheet of MDF or a 4x4 sheet of plywood, you're a little cramped when you get eight people around the table. And a six foot panel would be just too large to be comfortable when you're reaching across the table to collect your winnings. We're starting with a 4x4 sheet of MDF. Now I've actually trimmed this down to 46 inches from the 48 normally. Uh, so that's still square. I've just trimmed two inches off to give me a little uh, more room around the racetrack on the sides of the poker table. Now. Octagons aren't as difficult as they look. I'm going to give you an easy way to do this. We've got the calculator on the website, and it will tell me that for 46 inches, each side is going to be 19 inches across. So, I'm going to first find my center point, and that's at 23 inches. And I'm going to use a speed square to make a nice long center point. This is going to be necessary for lining this up with the other pieces later, so give yourself a good line. Now from there, I'm going to take 19 divided by 2, which is going to be 9.5 inches. I'm going to put my measuring tape down. I'm going to measure 9.5 out this way, and 9.5 out this way. I'm going to repeat that three more times to get the center point and the end points of each side on all four sides of this sheet of MDF. All I need to do is connect the end points to give me my 45 degree angle and now I can cut out my octagon. You can see on this particular sheet we've gone ahead and done that. I've used a circular saw to do this and we used a jig that's been done in another video. If you click on the tips page on the ShopGeek website you can find that video as well. We're now going to apply the adhesive to the MDF and then bond it to the foam that we're going to use for our playing surface. I'm going to spread the foam out on the birch plywood first to make my life a little easier. So we're going to spread it out inside we're going to spray the MDF outside because the adhesive's got a very powerful smell, and then we're going to bring it back in and press it down on the surface while the glue is still tacky. If it's curved from being in the packaging, you want to make sure that the curve goes up. That way the edges will bond really well and the weight we put on the middle will keep the MDF glued down to the surface while the glue sets. All right, now we apply a thin, even coat of 3M77 to the entire MDF surface. We bring that inside, flip it over, and glue it down to the foam. We'll put some weight on top just to make sure the foam sticks nice and evenly. The glue's had plenty of time to dry. You can see the bricks that we used to weigh down the MDF. I've got a fresh blade on the tip of my X-Acto now, and I'm going to trim flush with the sides of the MDF all the way around. Now, it's important when you're trimming the MDF that you're doing it on a surface you don't mind cutting. I've got this on a birch plywood, but we're going to cut it so that it's uh, marking up the underside of the plywood that we're going to be using for the table. This trim piece will stop the foam edges from getting crushed down when we tighten the speed cloth over top. But they sell this pine trim in 3 quarter inch widths, and the birch plywood is 18 millimeters thick. So if I was to put this up against the plywood, there'd be a slight lip. I'm going to rough cut these to length for my sides, and then we're going to shave them down to the right height with the router table. Trimmer on an octagon would normally require 22 and a half degree cuts. 
We're going to cheat a little. I'm using a miter box that only has 45 degrees and 90 degrees, but I can use the 45s to trim out this octagon. I've cut one piece with a 45 at each end that matches the line of the octagon on this side. So you can see that fits in perfectly now here. And I'm going to do that on four of these sides, so the cross and opposite from this piece. Then to fill in the remaining sides, I'm going to cut another 45 degree angle. And when I flip this over, that will line up flush with this side. So I've avoided having to cut that 22 and a half degree, but I'm still getting a solid corner all the way around my octagon. We'll repeat that four more times and we should have a solid surface that we're ready to cover. To attach these sides, I'm going to run a bead of wood glue along the bottom edge, only on the MDF, not on the foam, and then I'm using a pin nailer on a compressor to attach that. If you're using one of these, make sure you're using eye protection and ear protection because these can get loud. Surely we'll have something that will start to look like a poker table. We've flipped one of the birch plywood pieces good side up and vacuumed the surface and then brushed it with a cloth. Make sure there's no sawdust or loose bits of wood anywhere on this because you're going to lay out your speed cloth on top of this and then we'll put the upper sheet on top and start stapling. Covering the centerpiece is probably one of the more difficult parts of this. You want to get an even stretch on the fabric and you want to make sure it's nice and secure all the way around. Now, I'm going to use a T50 staple gun and I'm using 3 8 inch staples, but I want to make sure that these are going to hit the full depth. So I've got a scrap piece of the MDF that we cut off from the octagon and a scrap piece of my speed cloth. And I'm just going to make sure that that will go to full depth. Now it's a little loose, but it's not too bad. I'm going to put a fair number of staples around here. And we can tap those down with a hammer. And that'll be perfect for us. To start the covering, pull one side tight in the middle of the octagon, and then go to the opposite side, and make sure that your speed cloth is nice and snug. Now, this is a good moment to flip it over and make sure that you're smooth and you don't have any tight, uh, loose spots between those two points. And then we'll start working our way out and then we'll work around the corners. When you get to the corner, you want to cut out some of the speed cloth. I find two layers is fine, but if you fold it like this, you'll end up with three layers and some funny folds that just get in the way. So I'm going to trim back against my speed cloth into the corner and then I can bring this over and trim off some of this extra as well. I'm trimming this until I get a smooth point on this corner. I don't want any big bulges because that will leave a gap when we trim around the table to fit it into the base. Once you're satisfied with the speed cloth, the next step is to cut the circle out of the center of the best piece of plywood. So choose the best surface on the best piece of plywood and that will be our racetrack around the foam padding. I'm going to measure out to the center mark, and this is important, you want to center your octagon, obviously. So I've got 60 inches, I'm going to find my 30 inch mark. And using pencil, I'm going to draw out a light center line. Now repeat that for all four sides. Now using a sharpie, I'm going to find the center point on my speed cloth insert, not on the top but on the side. Be careful you don't mark the top surface. I'm going to measure out my side, and thanks to the trim we put on, it's 19 and a half inches. So I'm going to find the 9 and 3 quarter mark, 
and mark the center point. Now I'm going to repeat that on four sides and then my center point on the main board will match up with the center points on the center octagon and then we can trace around this center piece and begin cutting out the center. Once you've traced the octagon it has to go in exactly the same position every time so it has to face the same way. I've marked a small triangle on this side and on this piece of the wood so I know that my octagon is always going back in that position. So from this point forward you can't turn it around or twist it so get it in this position that you like and stick with it. I'm going to use a plunge cut to cut the octagon. Now the circular saw blade won't go flush right to the inside corner. So I'm going to cut with a plunge cut to the edges of the lines and then I'll use a jigsaw to finish this off. If you're not comfortable using a plunge cut on a circular saw, then you can use a drill, drill a hole in each corner and use a jigsaw to cut out the inside. That's a simpler, safer method, although the plunge cut with the circular saw will give you a cleaner edge. The circular saw leaves a little tab in each corner, so if you're using the plunge cut method, you're still going to grab a jigsaw and just clean that out at the very end. Have something underneath to catch the board when it drops. We're going to recycle this centerpiece into the base that holds the legs for the table. Now do your dry fit and make sure it's snug, and you're going to sand it slightly as we finish that off. But once you're satisfied with that fit, this centerpiece goes away and we won't see it again until we're finished all the rest of the table. Using the handy octagon calculator, I know that for a 60 inch wide piece of plywood, my size should be 24 and 7 eighths inches. Roughly, it's 24.85 inches. So from the center mark, I'm going to measure 12 and 7 sixteenths in each direction, and that'll be the length of my side. When the lines are marked, square up your two sheets of 5x5 five five plywood as, as perfectly as you can. Uh, we're going to cut them together when we cut the corners off, that way you have a nice smooth angle on each corner. Uh, I'm going to tack the sheets together with a few brads from my brad gun, just to stop it from shifting while I'm cutting. Now I'm not going to put any brads through the actual ring or the table itself, I'm only going to put it through the waist sections. I'm just going to put a few in each corner, and then we'll be able to take this outside and cut the wood off. If you want to put cup holders in your table, now's the time to decide where to place them. We're going to drill the holes before we stain. I'm going to be placing these three and a half inches in from the corner and three and a half inches up, and that will roughly center these for me in my rail. Now, when you select the hole saw, make sure you pick one that's just slightly bigger than the bottom, but not so big that the upper lip is going to fall right through the table. Some of you are wondering why I didn't glue this together and then cut the holes for my cup holders. The simple fact is my hole saw won't cut through a double piece of plywood, so I cut through the first layer, take out the circle, and then cut through the second layer. That's all. If your hole saw is deep enough, glue yours together first and then cut the holes. Absolutely. I'm going to trim off the corners next, and then we'll tidy this up and get ready to glue. When you're ready to glue the two pieces together, Run a bead of the carpenter's glue along the inside edge and the outside edge, and then put a zigzag in between. Have all your clamps ready to go before you start with the glue, that way there's a minimum amount of time between putting the glue down and starting the clamp. You don't want to give this any time to form a skin uh, over top of the glue, otherwise the wood won't bond. The middle that we cut out of the large octagon will be recycled into the base for the table. This is what we'll attach the legs to. I'm going to start by drawing a line from corner to corner. I don't need to draw the full line, this is just to give me a spot to mark the center for my table leg. 
Now, these table legs come with a screw on the center to insert them, and that screw is about an inch in from the leg. So I'm going to mark my center point for this two inches in. That'll give me an inch of room on the edge of the table from the leg. Now I'm going to drill a pilot hole with a bit that's just a little smaller than the shaft of the screw point. So you want to make sure that there's, it'll be a snug fit. I'm going corner to corner so that when I'm seated at the poker table, I don't have a table leg here. I've got it off to one side. Now I'm always going to do a dry fit of all of these parts so that the threads are already cut in the wood for when I'm ready to glue the leg to the table. Okay, that's working well. So we'll add glue and check the alignment as you tighten the leg. Once the table has been stained in polyurethane, I'll apply these brackets to the legs for a little extra reinforcement. I won't attach these now because it's easier to stain around this, but I will mark the holes and drill the pilot holes for the screws so that I can place them smoothly later. Once the glue has had plenty of time to dry, you're ready to sand, and then we're going to get to the stain. I'm going to use an 80 grit to start. The plywood is very smooth on top, I'm not worried about that. The 80 grit is to clean up the sides and the edges, and it will also let me round over the corners so that when people put their wrist on while we're playing cards, it's not going to hurt them. Now, if you prefer, you can put trim around the table, but I like an industrial look. I kind of like having the plywood edges showing, so I'm just going to smooth it as is and go from there. When you've sanded the surface as smooth as you want it, use a damp rag to clean off any dust that's left. This will do two things. The water will loosen up the pores of the wood, allowing the stain to soak in, and it will get all the dust that's remaining right off the surface. When you open your stain, give it a good stir. You don't want to shake it because you'll get bubbles in the finish. Now, this particular one is Minwax, and it says to put it on, leave for 15 minutes, and then take off any excess stain with a rag. And I'm just going to use the same one I did for dusting. Uh, follow any instructions on your stain, though, so that you're doing the right thing. I've loaded my sanding block with a 220 grit. Once the stain is completely dry, you want to go over that very lightly and just take care of any grain that's been raised or any imperfections. Don't sand too much. You don't want to remove the stain that you put down. After that's done, we're going to put a clear finish on this. I'm going to put four coats on top of the racetrack just to give it some extra durability. When you're using your finish, make sure again that you stir it rather than shake it. You don't want to get bubbles in the finish. And I'm going to put that on with a foam brush after we've mixed it. In order to attach the base to the table, I'm going to use screws. I don't want to glue this so that I can take the two pieces apart if I ever want to move this table from house to house. I'm using number 10 wood screws along with small washers that will stop this from countersinking all the way into the plywood. I'm going to drill pilot holes everywhere I want to put a screw using a 9 ths drill bit. For our final bit of drilling, I'm going to put a half inch hole near the edge of the base. That will give me a way of pushing up the MDF in the center piece without having to flip the whole table to drop it out. You want to dry fit your cup holders. Make sure they fit in the holes that you've cut. Perfect. And now I'm going to attach these with just regular white glue. I'm going to run a bead of this around the outer rim and then drop this in place. Drop the center into the table, call your friends, and you're ready to play. Are you in?